I'm Glenn Lowry, director of the Museum of Modern Art. I think being the director of any large museum requires the same set of skills, a desire to look and learn, to work with people, to think strategically, and to know art, to know and to love art, uh, to be an art historian, uh, to be deeply engaged with artistic issues, uh, and to actually want to pull together the different strands of the institution to make it work as a whole. I think MoMA is a laboratory. It's a place where ideas can be tested and explored. It's a place where you can learn about art. It's a place where you can discover something you don't know. It's a place where you can be intellectually challenged and stimulated. But I hope, above all, it's a place that brings an enormous amount of pleasure uh, because it's where ideas and people come together through a conversation about art. Well, the Museum of Modern Art could have easily been called the Museum of Contemporary Art. It's just that in 1929, the word that was used to describe the art of our time, of the moment, was modern. Later, people used the word contemporary to try and make an even greater distinction between the idea of modern art and art that was being made that very moment. Uh, from my point of view, they're one and the same thing. The contemporary is the leading edge of the modern, and they exist in a dialogue with each other. Well, I think it's very hard today to be contemporary without being global. I don't think they absolutely have to be one and the same thing, but today you have to work within a much more international environment than ever before, and thus I think to be contemporary means to be engaged with the global. I do not, because I don't think it's something that would work for us. Uh, we're, we're located in New York. That's where we operate from. That's where our collection is. That's where our programs are. We have relationships with museums around the world and partnerships sometimes to do long-term programming, but I don't see any need to have uh, museums that we own or operate or that are operated under a license from us elsewhere in the world. There are other ways of relating to one's colleagues that work better for us. I don't think so, not for me. Uh, I think a museum is a laboratory. Uh, there are many different metaphors that you can use, and of course a temple is one of them, but I think a museum of modern art has to be more dynamic, more engaged, and less about the sacred than a temple suggests. I think a museum of modern art is about experimentation and debate and dialogue. Uh, it's about a crucible where ideas and people and art are forged into a relationship with each other, much more than it is a place of reverence um, that a temple suggests. Well, I think there are a lot of different approaches to the best way to provide access to museums for the largest number of people. In the case of privately funded museums like ours, we can't afford to have free admission because we get no public funding to help subsidize it. I think when museums are funded primarily by the public, as they are in England, it makes sense that admission should be free. But there are museums in France that are publicly funded that charge admission. So there are many different strategies. I think what people forget is how expensive it is to run a museum. And at the end of the day, you have to look at all the different ways of supporting a museum and try to make it work intelligently. I think the goal is to keep admission programs as reasonable as possible. But it doesn't mean that all museums should always be free, even if one thinks ethically or morally that that is the best possible way to ensure the largest possible public. In the same way that uh, dance and theater and opera uh, aren't free, even when they're publicly funded. It costs money to support a staff, to support the infrastructure of a building, to support a collection, to support an exhibition program, and in the end you have to find that funding from somewhere, and I think a modest entrance fee uh, is one of those ways. It's certainly not the only way, but it's one of those ways. And I think for those of us who are compelled to have an admissions program, the challenge is to find ways for people who can't afford the cost of admission to still come to the museum through discounted tickets or even through uh, free afternoons or free evenings.
Well, I think there are a number of very important art galleries in the world, and of course they're going to represent some of the most important artists in the world, and it's logical that most important museums are going to want to do exhibitions with important artists. I don't think the fact that five galleries represent so many artists means that much because in reality most museums are also looking at many other artists represented by other galleries and perhaps they don't acquire the same level of prominence, at least not initially, but it's important also to remember that many of the artists represented today by the leading galleries started out often with smaller galleries elsewhere. So there's a degree of circulation that I think always has to be taken into account. But at the same time, the major museums are going to compete to do exhibitions with the most important artists. And if they're represented by five galleries, 10 galleries, or 20 galleries, it's going to be primarily those galleries that many museums work with. Well, first of all, I don't think the kind of conflict of interest you're discussing uh, really exists. Uh, one, our committees don't vote on exhibitions. And any work of art presented to those committees is presented because a curator has made a decision to present a work to a committee. It's not that the committees present works to curators. And our exhibition schedule is published years in advance. So you don't have to be on the board of the museum to know what our exhibitions are going to be in 2017 or 2018 or even 2019. So I, I just don't think that this anxiety over conflict of interest in terms of exhibition programs uh, is real, at least not in our institution, because the exhibition program is developed solely through the curatorial staff. Not necessarily. I mean, we make many acquisitions and that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to affect the market price of an artist. At the end of the day, the market is far more substantial than any one museum and is certainly no longer made by any given institution. But acquisitions are made by public institutions or publicly funded institutions and privately funded institutions, often in the same way, through acquisition committees. And I don't see that the fact that a museum uses private funding to buy a work of art is all that different from a museum using public funding to buy a work of art because in both instances there are oversight committees made up of trustees and collectors who clearly have access to uh, important information although that information doesn't remain discreet for very long. Well there are many different ways you can read that and of course museums want to position themselves independently of the art market, just as the art market in positions itself independently of museums. And yet we also intersect with each other and we live in the same larger world if you want to look at it from a macro perspective. I think at a micro level we each inhabit different spaces, but at a macro level we're all part of a larger art world and I think that's what makes life interesting. Brightly. I see them brightly. I think museums have become um, defining institutions of civil society and so I think they will continue to be like that.